that instead of sending me to the shop, he met me in Madrid. I still can't get over it. I was very surprised. And so in love with another pen. And so I'll share that one with you. It's such a small pen. And I found two that I just went and bought. And one of them is this one. Hi, this is Kai from Kikai Craft, and this is my first video back from our trip to Spain. So I don't know if you've seen my shorts um, or my Instagram feed, but we've been to Spain and it's not our first time. We love the place, so we often go there. It's such a beautiful place and it's well worth the almost one day long trip to go there. Um, and in this trip, during this trip, I had a blast because I went on a little bit of a, uh, I wouldn't say like a pilgrimage or like a little visitation route of all the um, stationary and fountain pen places that I can find there. Now, what I'll be sharing with you today is like the fruit of some research that I did before I went there and a few uh, serendipitous um, stumblings upon certain shops and discoveries. So just to let you know, right before this, there's a whole like reels and reels of the whole travel. And I'm not quite sure yet right now if I'm going to put them in between the, um, the sharing of my haul from Spain. Okay, so let's start off with the Madrid leg of our trip. Now, in Madrid, I thought that I'd go to a Mont Blanc store in Madrid because during one of my research, I spoke to someone who went to Madrid quite recently because the last time I was there was quite some time ago, like two, three years ago. And so I was wondering about fountain pens. And the person told me that the only place they found was a Mont Blanc shop in Madrid. And so I thought really that's all that I was going to find there, but that's not what happened. So first off, I did remember that one of my favorite Instagram accounts by Jose Naranja um, has like, um, what's? shared a story at one time that his books uh, were ready at a shop in Madrid. So what did I do? I sent Jose a message and I asked him for the shop name because I had forgotten. And uh, instead of sending me to the shop, he met me in Madrid. I still can't get over it. I was very surprised. And so on my, I think my third or fourth day in Madrid, we met at a coffee shop and he personally handed me his Nautilus manuscript. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, his work, I will put his Instagram name right there and maybe a screenshot of some of his work uh, from his feed. And um, I suggest you go check it out. He does fantastic journaling. And so when I met him, I really didn't know whether I wanted the Nautilus or the Orange Manuscript. Eventually, I decided on the Nautilus Manuscript and he had it in this box, which he hand delivered to me in a coffee shop in Madrid. And so I'm very, very happy. I will unbox this. You will find it in my reels. It is just a beautiful piece. Now his other work, it's called the Orange Manuscript. Uh, the difference between these two would be this is his newest work so this sorry if i'm not mistaken uh are like curated snippets of his work from 2015 to 2019 so you'll see a lot of like his journal pages from that what 15 16 17 18 19 five years span in the nautilus manuscript the orange manuscript would be roughly 2015 or uh, before 2015 but i got the newer one eventually i was thinking of getting the orange manuscript as well but there's just so much to unpack in this one that i thought maybe in two years time or even quicker i'll just get that uh, first um journal that he shared with the world 
Now, apart from this beautiful book that he uh, hand delivered, I can't stop myself from saying that multiple times because it was such a wonderful moment. We also spent quite a lot of time sitting at the coffee shop and just talking about journals and pens and techniques and just life in general. It was a beautiful meetup. So thank you, Jose, for meeting me. Um, that was just a wonderful highlight of my trip in Spain. So I'll be um, unboxing this and sharing it in the reels, okay? But I got the Nautilus manuscript from him. Now, during that same day, I decided I would go around and just have a look at um, like a map, a fountain pen map that I stumbled upon online. I will put the link to that blog post uh, in the comment section, but I'll, I'll also put a little bit of a screen grab of the uh, Google map that he prepared uh, for those who might want to go and visit Madrid and check on fountain pens. And I went to a few of them, which were near the hotel where, where we were. And I have to say that two of those places were closed. Like one of them didn't even have any semblance of a shop there. So that was a little sad, but I went to one more shop that had no information anywhere. Well, not a lot of information anywhere online. Website could not be found. There is no Instagram as well of this particular shop, but it is like people talk about the shop so much and the person who manages it. Now, if you're not familiar uh, with Julia Gusano, she is a vintage pen restorer. And I just love vintage pens. And so it was, we, we walk all the time in Madrid because it's such a beautiful place to walk. And with winter, it was very cold. And so it was just wonderful and nice to walk to her place. And it, it felt like a little bit Harry Potter-ish in the sense that it the, the shop is in this, like it's inside a compound. And we were just quite lucky that while we were looking for our shop, somebody was having a delivery. And so the door to their compound was open. And since I had some sort of an address, Google Maps said that's where it was. I decided to ask um, the guy who was at the door if he knew of the shop, because there's no signage, there's nothing in the street that will show you where it is. And so I just asked, hoping that maybe he was at least familiar and could tell me, um, if it was still there, if it had moved. And at this point, I was a little sad already because I this was my third shop and this was like um, trying to shoot an arrow at the moon. I had no huge hopes of finding it. Of course, I was wishing, but anyway, lo and behold, he said, oh yeah, you're in the right place. Just go right in and you will find it. And so I found Julia Gosano's fantastic, wonderful shop. Made me think of Diagon Alley. It was like a workshop. It was just beautiful. And I think at this point, I'm just gonna share a very short clip of how the place looks and also how Julia just handles the pen and um, really enjoys talking about the pens.
hello again. Julia Gusano's shop is called the Trade Art SL and she hands out these cards. And you go to her place. I actually don't know. I think you fold it and that's that. And it's just chock full of pretty, beautiful, super old vintage pens. And I went to her shop twice actually. First time I thought I'd just get one pen to sort of remember this trip by. But then I fell in love with another pen that I was looking at during that time and I went back for it. Now, of course, I love vintage. If you've been following my channel, you know how much I love vintage pens. I have a number of uh, 1920s, 1930s pens, and I also love flex pens, uh, or flex nibs, rather. And so um, it was just beautiful to go there and find not one, not two, but three vintage flex pens. And so, the first one I got was this. This is a, okay, let me just take it out for you. Um, I'll do a full unboxing talking about the history of these pens and some sequent videos, but I just wanted to show you. So this is a Conklin pen. Um, initial research tells me this was released sometime in the 1920s. Again, I'll talk more about the pen, show writing samples in my next videos. I haven't even cleaned it. I just gave it like a quick wipe. Um, and I'll be doing the cleaning and all of that, the inking and the writing sample in my uh, subsequent videos. So this was the first one. This is a Conklin um, Crescent pen from the 1920s. And then I came back for one more pen. I don't know which one it is. I think it's this one. So uh, let me just have a quick look. Yep, I came back for this one, but I also fell in love with another pen. And so I'll share that one first with you. It's such a small pen. Look at that, so small. Again, I will be doing like cleaning, inking, and talking about the history of these pens in subsequent videos. So I hope you look at, you keep an eye out for those. But this one is an Ixa pen. Now, an Ixa pen is a Spanish brand. It's a post-war established um, fountain pen brand that ran for just a few years, not even a decade. And so this was released at that time. The body is celluloid and the flex on this one because you get to try them julio talks you through them and the flex on this one was just phenomenal and it was since it was so beautiful i thought i couldn't leave it behind and so i got this little sweetheart along with a pen i went back for and this is the pen that i went back for this is a waterman and it is a safety nib pen, which means when you open it up, you don't see the nib. Again, I'll talk a lot about it. All these three pens have different filling mechanisms, very different from what we have nowadays. Um, even this safety pen um, that I got, the Waterman, also lovely flex. And this one has a different um, filling mechanism from the uh, current retractable nibs or safety nibs. And so I got these three from Julia Gusano, all vintage 1920s, 1940s, and all flex nibs, like wonderful. That was very exciting. Julia Gusano has been working with vintage pens since 1980s, very early 1980s, and she goes to pen shows around the world, usually in the US and um, in Madrid, to share her pens and to talk about the pen. She also makes her own inks and they have very lovely colors. So um, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, yes, these are the uh, things that I got in Madrid. And then we went to another place. Oh yeah, I didn't have time to go and check other shops at that time, uh, maybe like a Mont Blanc store, but um, they didn't have any fantastic, like new, no, rather new old stock kind of pen. So I didn't really get any from them. And the inks that I was hoping they had, like the uh, scented cinnamon inks were not um, available in their shops. So that was 
Well, I'm glad I found Julia Gusano. I'm glad I met um, Jose Naranja because those were just the highlights. The Mont Blancs, I can find them where I am. So after Madrid, we also went to Malaga. If you're not familiar, Madrid is somewhere in the center of Spain and Malaga is towards the south of Spain where you find beautiful beaches. And we go there for the beach, we go there for a little bit of warmth. And for this particular visit that I'm coming from, um, I also went there to check, of course, stationery and fountain pen, and that place did not disappoint. I went to, let me just check, one, two, uh, three, four, five places um, that had beautiful books and it had beautiful pens and it just had beautiful stationery. One of the places that I went to is quite new. I think you'd have this where you are right now. Um, I know they have it here in Indonesia. I know they have it in Spain, obviously. And I know that they have it in the Philippines and a slew of places. And this is the Flying Tiger. And this is where I got a lot of things. Flying Tiger apparently makes their own um, knickknacks. I, I don't know if I should call it knickknacks because it's beyond that um and when i went there it was i just wanted to buy so many things because it's such a beautiful place to go to if you haven't been to a flying tiger and there is one in your place go and visit because it's so much fun for people who love stationery and all these little toys and these novelty items they have a lot of that so um one thing that i couldn't quite find where i am here in jakarta or in indonesia would be beautiful christmas stickers and so when I got there, this was something that I had my eye on, especially when I saw that they had quite a number of them. So apart from the Christmas stickers, I also got some washi tape, really pretty ones. And I got a stamp set because who says no to stamp sets? The prices aren't so bad either. And of course, as I mentioned, I got some stickers. I know it's past Christmas already, but because I was having a difficult time, with Christmas stickers here. I thought I'd stock up for Christmas 2024. I know that's like a year away, but still at least I have it already. And I also found myself this palette that I've actually been looking for. So it's a beautiful palette. Um, and again, I'll just do a real unboxing, but see that that's ceramic and that's the pattern that it has on it. It's just, okay, why not? Let me just share with you how it looks inside because it's really nice and it's quite hefty as well. It's quite heavy. Um, okay, I have used this, so I'm not sure why it doesn't want to open for us. Maybe I opened it here. Yeah, okay. oh, there. Okay, I really don't know how I opened this. Oh, there, maybe I did open it from here. 
it's very heavy and it's very beautiful and it comes with a few paint brushes as well look at this so nice not really going for asmr here but really hefty really nice and it's gorgeous it's just lovely and since i've been going into water painting again or watercolor painting again i just couldn't pass this one up okay um so that's like m one of the more modern places i went to we also found um this place called uh libreria isla negra and it's like this old vintage bookshop uh, now they do have vintage books and vintage documents they have one of the oldest books actually we visited this place uh, about two three years ago and also on our first visit because it's such a wonderful place to go to it's small but it's it's just beautiful they have like really old books that they keep in this in these glass cases if i can i'm gonna go ahead and put a photo there for you so you see um and it's just beautiful now i didn't get anything from that place because um i don't collect vintage books but i love being around them now a place i did get something from that had a vintage kind of look is called the mapas e compania or maps and company and this is the libreria mapas e compania libreria de viajes it's like a uh like a library for travelers and you can find this in calle campania in the central part of malaga and the shop literally looks like this and if i didn't put it at the beginning um i'll put a, like a sub reel maybe right about now so you can see just how beautiful the shop is all right so i did get a few things from this shop because it's like why not it's so pretty um now what i did get were washi tapes okay so these are paper blank washi tapes if you're unfamiliar with paper blank they have beautiful notebooks uh, which may or may not be fountain pen friendly depending on the batch and the design and the year so it's a bit of a hit and miss and i got these two uh beautiful washi tapes they even have uh names if i'm not mistaken let me just have a look at my travel journal for you and let's just uh here so i have this little spread and this blue one is called blue velvet and this one is some pear in yeah pear garden pretty um washi tape and so i got these um, I also got, because of course it's a, um, what do you call that? It's a cartographer's space as well. They have a lot of maps um, and they have a lot of uh, beautiful books about travel and art and uh, literature. They also have stationery for travelers. They have beautiful travelers notebooks. They have fountain pens. They have all these and I'm not into getting maps and uh, I don't have a lot of space for more books. So uh, I just got myself this beautiful little globe that they had in some sort of like sepia tone. And it's just lovely. And maybe you'll see this on my Instagram. I don't know. It's in my stationary basket. And finally, I got one very pretty accessory from them. Okay, and this is a lovely necklace. That's also a book from Mala Malva Visco Books. And again, I'll be unboxing this in my shorts for brevity in this sort of haul sharing video. So if you would like to see how it looks, you can open it and there are pages inside. It's a necklace. I'll be sharing it in my feed quite soon but it's so pretty all right so this was another thing that i bought from the um librerias mapas e uh, compania bookstore i also went to another very beautiful bookstore and this was a bookstore that was connected to a museum 
it is called the Museo Carmen Thyssen um, Bookshop in Malaga. And they have beautiful books um, filled with information about art. They have for adults, they have for children, and it's just a wonderful place to go to. I didn't quite get anything from that shop because I wasn't really there for books. Um, but I always visit that bookstore as well when I'm there just to just have a look at the books. It's also mostly in Spanish and I don't read Spanish yet trying to. And so um, just sharing it for those who might uh, visit Malaga and want to know about the different beautiful bookstores that they have there. So one would be the Librerias Mapas y Compañía and another one would be the Libreria in the Museo Carmen Thyssen in Malaga. They actually have another like stationery shop there. It's called Mr. Wonderful. You'll find that at the train station. It's very small. Um, it has a lot of planners and notebooks that may or may not be fountain pen friendly, but I didn't quite get anything from there because it's mostly in Spanish and I was a little bit afraid of the paper. However, there was one shop where I made just a few more purchases and that would be um, a shop called Sanatorio Estilo Grafico. And it's a fountain pen shop and it's quite a modern fountain pen shop, modern looking fountain pen shop, even if it's been running uh, since 1940, actually. And so it's a family owned business where they have really good people, really helpful people, really knowledgeable people who assist you as you go and look at their selections. They have everything from Mont Blancs to uh, Inoxcom, I think that's a Spanish fountain pen brand that has also a lot of history and uh, they also have Cavecos. Now, I do collect a little bit. Um, I do collect Cavecos, and I found two that I just went and bought. And one of them is this one. This is a Caveco limited uh, edition, okay? And it is their, oops, yes, it is their Orangina. And this is limited to sales in Spain and Portugal, if I'm not mistaken. And it's basically your Caveco Sport, but in this very vibrant orange color. It's called Orangina, and at first I was a little bit confused. Why? Right? I mean, the flag is red and yellow. Yeah, okay, put them together, you get orange, but the tones of that one wouldn't create such a vibrant orange until we were in uh walking in malaga and i realized that winter time is actually orange season there too so there are loads of oranges um in the orange trees there so i maybe that's the connection although orange you know, is some sort of fizzy drink um another one that i got and i think this is the last one i'll be sharing today is another caveco but this is to sort of help build my Caveco Lilliput collection. Now I'm trying to get all nine or 10 Lilliputs that are going around. And so this is the Caveco um, Lilliput Brass Wave. It's so pretty. I'll be sharing a video of all the Lilliputs that I've amassed so far. I think I have about maybe seven or eight. Um, and this is the newest addition to it. Um, they couldn't find it in the shops here in um, Jakarta. Actually, I've been talking to Inkshare about it. Hi, James, and hello, Steph. You've been very, very helpful in my search for these Lilliputs. And they um, couldn't find this for me. And so I was so glad that the shop in Malaga, the Sanatorio Estilográfico, had it for me. And so, of course, I had to get it. And so from this trip alone, I got myself five pens, five fountain pens, two very modern ones and three very old ones. And I got a few things for my journaling, uh, some uh, washi tapes, some stamps, a pretty little notebook and something also for my painting. And so you can say that uh, the trip has been quite a success. Also met Jose, 
and Julia, and it was just, and the lovely staff at Estilo Grafico, a Sanatorio Estilo Grafico, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience for me. So if you're going to go to Spain, specifically Madrid and Malaga, I'll leave um, the links to Instagram or to even that map that I use in the comments below so that you can have a look and have a gander and come and share if you find any of the shops on that uh, map that I have. I only found one out of so many because the others were a bit too far. Um, and uh, if you have any more shops, if you're from Madrid, Malaga, Barcelona, anywhere in Spain, basically, and if you have additional shops that you think people should go to for vintage pens, for new pens, for um, stationery, go ahead and comment below because I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who's excited to go and visit stationery shops when they're going and traveling around the world. All right, so this is Kai from Kikai Craft. Do try and um, keep an eye out for my videos on the different pens, the different unboxings. Subscribe to the channel, um, turn on notifications so you're aware. I am trying to think of a more uh, structured schedule for 2024. And uh, so I hope you come and join me as I go deeper into the rabbit hole and experience more things in this fountain pen journey. All right, so this is Kai, wherever you are, I hope you're going to have a great day or that you're gonna have a restful evening. Bye everyone.